it's me, Matt Holborn. I'm a jazz violinist. I'm here to teach you a little bit about how to become a jazz violinist. Today's video is talking about three tunes that I think that you should learn if you're a beginner jazz violinist. Now, I'm not saying that these are the only tunes that you should learn when you're first starting out, but what I am saying is that these three tunes have a bunch of different aspects, mainly harmonically, uh, that you as a beginner are going to get a lot out of learning and starting to understand. Now, we are not learning these tunes in this video. I'm just going to tell you these three tunes, tell you a little bit about them, things to look out for when you're learning them. Um, but really what this video is all about is just trying to guide you in the right direction because really that's what I tend to try to do with all of my students with all of my teaching it's generally just me trying to guide you in the right direction if you enjoy this video please like share subscribe and do all of those things hit the bell notification at the bottom i think it's at the bottom i don't know but if you can that would be really helpful it's great for me as a creator blah 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 blah. you understand let's do it so three tunes that i think are great for beginner jazz violinists number one lady be good lady be good is one of those tunes that is played by most musicians so you're going to hear it in the jazz manouche or gypsy jazz world you're going to hear it in the swing world and i think most jazz musicians are going to at least know a little bit about this tune and will be able to play this tune with you so it means that it's, it's a very versatile tune and it's something that you can play with most jazz musicians it's often played in g major or f major which in my opinion quite nice keys for playing on the violin it also has some interesting chord changes in it one of those chord changes being one to four as a dominant uh, in the key of g major that would be g major going to C7, right? C7 is not in the key of G major, but it really does sound at home, and it's a sound that we get used to quite a lot. You hear that sound in the blues and jazz all over the place, so it's something that you need to get used to um, playing over. It also has 2-5-1 in the home key. It goes to the 4 in the B section. It has this nice movement from 4 to sharp 4 diminished in the B section, so there's loads of stuff going on in this tune. Um, it's a nice, simple tune, and the melody is also really nice and simple too. Tune number two is All of Me. Now, All of Me has a lot more chord changes in it, and it feels a little bit more complicated than the last tune that we looked at. But it's not actually all that hard once you've got your head around it a little bit. It's got some really interesting chord changes in it as well. Um, and once again, one of the reasons why I think this one is... Um, is great for beginners to learn is because it is played by most people most people again will know this tune also the thing about all of me which is great for a beginner is the melody is very very interesting and the melody also really will teach you a lot about how a melody is put together it follows the chord changes using nice voice leading and it also has a really nice sense of form it really takes you on a journey and you sort of know when the end of the form is coming because the melody is sort of coming to a climax in a way i think the melody for all of me is really helpful for beginner jazz violinists or beginner jazz musicians in general to learn about how melody is put together more specifically, the harmony, that first change is a very, very interesting change, and it's one that we hear a lot. What we've got in that first change is one to three in a dominant. In the key of C major, that's C major, and then it goes to E7. That chord change has sort of stood the test of time. You hear it all the way through pop music from you know when jazz was pop music up until right now. So it's a really interesting change. One to three is a dominant. It's something that really evokes quite a lot of emotion I think in the listener and it's a change that you as a jazz musician should try and get used to. Lastly number three the third tune that I think is really helpful for a jazz violinist to learn is minor swing. Now I know that's a classic a lot of people are going to know that it's one of the tunes that a lot of people probably already do know but some people will miss it out. Now the reason I think that you should learn minor swing as a beginner jazz violinist is that one of the best jazz violin solos ever recorded was recorded over minor swing. The original recording of minor swing by Django Reinhardt and Stefan Grappelli has an amazing solo in it by Grappelli and it's one of those solos that I think is very important for you as a jazz violinist to try to learn at some point. It's also a very nice tune to learn about playing in a minor key uh, and playing in a nice simple way because the chord changes are very very simple. We've just got three chords. We've got one, four and five in A minor. So it's A minor, D minor and E7. 
the chord changes aren't too quick either so they stay on these chords for decent period of time so you can use this tune as a way to really work on playing over minor chords it's also really fun to play over and it's a great tune to start with when it comes to actually trying to actually improvise it does make a lot of sense you can use one scale all the way through it a harmonic minor scale and it's just a great tune to learn you will be able to play it with anybody in that sort of jazz manusha gypsy jazz world and it will set you up to be able to understand minor tonalities uh, very very well so look guys those are the three tunes that i think you've got to learn when you're first starting to play jazz violin one thing that we've got to remember here, guys, is that we are frontline instruments. Our role in a band is not to play the chords. We're not there to lay down the chords for anybody and to be able to perform the chords if we're playing in a band. Because of this, I think that a lot of violinists fall short with never actually learning the chord sequences for the tunes that they know, using their ear and trying to just do things by feel, which I think is a great thing to do. But at some point, you're really going to have to learn the chords and you're going to have to learn how to outline the chords in your playing. There's a number of different ways to make sure that you as a violinist know the chords. One of those things is to try and play the chords on a chordal instrument. If you play the guitar or the piano, try learning to play the chord sequences through on one of those instruments. It's a really simple way of at least knowing what the chords are. That's not going to mean that you can play over the tunes perfectly, but it will help you start to understand sort of, you know, how chord sequences work, where they end and where they start and all that. Now, the, you know, the other way of doing this is to try and learn to play the chords uh, or to outline the chords in some way on your instrument. One thing that I always get my students to do is to try and pretend to be a bassist. Try to pretend to be a bassist and outline the chords by playing really simple notes from those chords, i.e. the roots, the fifths, then adding maybe some thirds, maybe some sevenths. Bassist always knows the chords, so if you can try and get yourself into the role of the bassist when you're practicing, that will set you up really nicely for understanding the chord sequences and knowing where you are in the tune. Anyway, guys, I hope that's helped. Anyway, guys, I hope that's helped. Uh, please subscribe and all that stuff. I'll see you very soon. Goodbye.